Good morning. We are going to be just practicing some Hatha Yoga today, especially focusing on our shoulders and our hips. Just starting to come into butterfly pose. And of course, if you don't want to do this, you can just sit crisscross or any other way that works good for you. And we're just going to start to notice that we're breathing. Try to breathe in through your nose, maybe out the mouth a few times, and then moving into nostril breathing only, two nostrils at the same time. With each inhale, you can feel yourself drawing in new energy. With each exhale, you're letting go of the old, used up energy. And you're sinking just a little deeper into the floor. I like to have my eyes closed or just simply gazing downward. The eyes are rolling down, whether they're closed or open. And at first, the air might be a little bit higher in your chest. And you're just going to slowly transition down toward a belly breath. Keep breathing as you check in with your spine, maybe bringing your head slightly higher, more in line with your tailbone. Continue to watch as you breathe in what it feels like. And again, when you breathe out. As the mind wanders, bring it back to that breath. If you feel like there's tightness in your neck and shoulders, maybe relax the arms a little more. Feel free to gently lower the chin just slightly toward the floor. Keep breathing. We'll take about four or five more breaths. Pay attention to the sounds in the room around you, the temperature of the air, and take one more deep breath. Bringing the palms together, your eyes might still be closed, dipping your head down just a little more, maybe even leaning slightly forward. One more breath here setting an intention to take care of ourselves through our practice today, doing what works best for us. And then lifting the head and opening the eyes, wiggling those fingers. Feel free to start walking the feet onto the floor and rocking the knees. I'm gonna stretch out my legs one by one. See how that feels. Rolling the feet a little bit. Taking hands to hip, I'm just going to kind of slide my chest side to side, just getting into the back. I can feel the sides of the spine, the muscles on either side kind of engage as I rock away. Good. Coming back to center, feel free to wiggle those toes a little more. And think about it for a moment. Think about if you'd like to keep your legs long or tuck them in or go back to butterfly. Any foot position is going to be good here getting nice and tall again. We're just gonna make some big circles with our torso. And I'm gonna kind of keep my head fairly stable and just roll through the chest, kind of like a, a cement mixer, rock and back, coming up and around. I'm going in one direction several times. And then you'll know when you wanna switch and go the other way. You can get the shoulders involved here too. This is one of my absolute favorite things to do just when I sit down, when I'm sitting on the floor, just getting the fluid back into the hips, the spine, the shoulders. Good. Coming back to center, I'm going to keep one foot tucked in and stretch one leg out so that my pelvis kind of rocks forward when I do that. And I'm still sitting up on my 
pillow here. I don't think you can see it. Rocking that pelvis forward, I'm going to lean slightly forward, opening up the legs, the, the inner leg muscle here, and getting that. I'm swinging the chest forward and up with the chin. Good. You can always take your hands in front of you, kind of prop up a little bit, and one big breath. Trying to use your nose. Walking those hands in. Let's lean back. Get a little bit of a different stretch, opening up the slightly the front of the body. I'm just gonna rock the leg that's long side to side, just getting into that knee there. Starting to bend the knee up, rock that hip side to side. And you might not wanna go as far if you've got hip stuff going on, you wanna be really gentle with your hip. We're just doing one hip at a time. I'm gonna come up to a really tall spine, lift the knee up and make some circles with this knee, good. I'm gonna to start to bring the other leg forward a little bit so that I have a little more balance. I'm gonna pick up this long, the, the foot of the long leg and rock back and forth a little bit here. And lots of people like to cradle the leg, bringing the knee into the chest. That's fine if you wanna do that. You can swing the hips a little bit. Just try to be really conscious of what's going on in your low back. I like to let the leg float away a little more so that I have a little bit more movement in my spine, not so rounded, good. And then I'll bring this foot down in front of me and I'll stretch the other leg out and I might tuck that foot in a little more. Good. And we're just going to do the other side. Lean it forward, maybe prop the hands. Play with that foot, those toes. Spine is long, especially if you've been kind of rounding into this. Let's lift the chest, lift the chin, open the throat, deep, deep breath. I like to move just a little bit if that feels good. And one more deep breath. Taking the hands behind, stretching out. Again, you can feel this a little bit across that bent knee, just across both of the hips. Another breath, wiggling those toes a little more. And then bringing this foot up onto the floor, sitting up nice and tall and moving that knee. And of course, you can just be doing this. You don't have to keep going into the sequence you can, or you can come back to this position. I'm gonna take my time leaning back to lift the knee up and move that hip around. I might replant the foot and swing that leg that's on the floor a little more forward so I have a little more support as I lift the foot and bring it into the chest and swing that around, good. Really getting those hips nice and open. Good. And then I'm gonna stretch both legs out nice and long, staff pose. Flatten up the feet, really push out through the heels, wiggle those toes. Feel free to point and flex the feet a few times, just moving through those joints. Get nice and tall with the feet flat. Maybe take the hands down by your sides. We're just gonna take three deep breaths here. Really squeeze the thighs up. Make those kneecaps lift. Good, one more breath. And then relax those toes. We're just gonna swing the legs over to one side and come on up to table pose. Feel free to slide a blanket up under your knees. We'll be here for just a few, a few movements, make some big circles in the hips. Now we're feeling the outer edge of the hips. When we were seated, we were getting more to the inside of the legs. Now we're moving the outside of the leg. Maybe some cat cows with everything lined up, head forward. Move with your breath. Coming down into your cow pose, drop the belly down. We're just gonna take one hand print forward, step each hand forward, good. Maybe even a little more forward as you then begin to swing the hips forward, lift the heart, stretch out the spine so there's not a big dip in the low back. Breathing, move the hips back nice and slow. Don't move your hands, keep them right where they are and just lift that tailbone, stretch it up in the air and let the belly and the chest sag down, get into those shoulders, good. Stay here for another breath. 
and then just begin to move in slow motion, taking maybe an entire inhale and exhale to swing slowly forward. If there's any issue with your wrists, you can bring your elbows to the floor. And maybe you'll go a little deeper as you rock forward, maybe a little higher as you rock back. Just gonna do this one more time, swinging those hips, lifting the gaze and moving it back. We're gonna stay in this extended child's pose position with the hands really far forward. The hips are up high, they're not touching the heels, but the belly is sagging down onto those thighs. You might even open the knees slightly to get the belly to hang down between them a little more. We're just going to walk the hands over to one side of the mat right off onto the floor. Take a breath and stretch it back, opening the side body. And then taking the time to move over to the other edge of the mat and sink down again. And the breath. Coming slowly back up to table, we're going to curl the toes under, shift the hips back and up into down dog. And I'm going to take some time here in the first down dog to pedal, push the feet one heel to the floor and then the other or toward the floor. I like to spread my feet apart out to the edges of the mat and rock a little side to side, foot to foot. Just keeping those hips engaged. If there's any issue in the wrists, you can come down onto elbows, or of course you can come up and down. You can do this in table pose as well. Let's take three more deep breaths. And lifting the head, looking where you're gonna go, start to walk those feet forward toward the hands, coming to about the middle of the mat. Resting the elbows on the thighs, tip that tailbone up. I like to just kind of swing a little here. Let the blood, the blood come slowly back to the heart as you take your time lifting the head. Keep that back flat the whole time. Slowly, slowly, slowly come on up to standing. Good. Let's lean back a little bit. Swing the hips a little bit. We're gonna do some standing pretty quick here. I'm gonna make some big circles with those hips. Check in with your low back, see how it's feeling. Know that you can support that low back by pulling that low belly in, taking your time there. Let's come up to the middle of the mat, turning sideways to the long edge of the mat. And let's find mountain pose, arms down by your sides, Feet in a comfortable position for your hips. Rocking a little bit, toes to heels at first. Maybe swinging a little side to side. Let's inhale, the arms rise up. The arms reach straight up out of the shoulders, planting those feet, maybe feeling the outer edges and then the big toe mound. Good, reaching up. This pose is called volcano. Pull the belly in, expand the chest with the breath. Feel the, the loops and the fluids draining down through the arms. Just twist out the wrists a little bit and take one more inhale, reaching up. Exhale, let the arms go wide, going really slow so you can feel the musculature engage in those shoulders. And then bring those arms across each other and grab your shoulders on the outside. Good. Give yourself a hug here. Notice which arm is on top. Drop your chin, stretch out the back of the spine, the back of the neck, keeping the low belly engaged. One more breath. And we're gonna lift up with the arms, reaching them up again, stretching them up. Inhale one more time. Arms go out really, really slow. Slowly the palms turn downward and we're gonna cross the other arm on top. See if you can remember which one it was. <laughs> Tuck your chin and breathe into that low neck where it connects to the shoulders. That's where I hold so much tension. Slowly bringing the elbows up and reaching up with those arms and then bring them slowly, slowly down. We're gonna take the hands behind us and I'm just gonna plant my hands one on top of the other, 
elbows are pointing out and start to step my feet wider and wider apart. This is just a nice chest opener, coming into a nice position with your feet, any distance that feels comfortable to you. Rock a little bit onto those toes and onto the heels, just testing out which part of the feet you need to press into a little more, good. Leading with your heart, sticking your tailbone out behind you, keep the chin pointing forward. We're just leaning into this stretch in the legs. Unlock your knees just a little bit. Good, keep the low back, you can feel it because your hands are on it. Keep that back flat and you can stay right here for another breath. Make sure there's a tiny bend in the knees, squeeze the glutes, press into the floor with your feet as you rise up. Good, releasing those arms, we're just gonna let them hang, maybe roll them out a little bit and turn one foot out. Moving into warrior two legs. And maybe come up and down a few times. And as you do that, maybe move the hips a little bit. Just testing into the body this morning. Feel free to rub the knee, give it a little love. Make sure the knee stays right over the ankle here. I'm gonna take my hand right to that knee joint, right above the knee joint. Other hand on the hip. And then start to straighten out the knee, but not lock it. Moving into our triangle pose. Nice and slow. You can feel the back of the leg engage. And I like this position. I'm kind of squeezing the leg here. Whoop, getting a cramp. <laughs> I need to drink more water. Take your time, one more breath maybe. Feel free to go a little deeper into your triangle pose. Top shoulder is going to tell you how far to go. When it starts to roll forward, you've gone far enough. And one more breath. Keep the low belly engaged as you gently stand up. We're going to re-bend that knee. Good. And come into extended angle. Leaning into that thigh, the other arm can reach up. And moving real slow. Want to be really careful and gentle here. Breathe into your ribs, really feel them expand. Take your time. Feel free to move into that triangle pose again if that felt really good to you. Or moving back to warrior two if you prefer that. And we're just gonna stay wherever we choose to for the next three deep breaths. Slowly coming back to that wide angle pose. We're gonna gently bring our feet back together, back to mountain pose. Swing the feet and then eventually find stillness. I'm gonna turn in the middle of my mat, turn toward the top of the mat. Gently begin to slide my hands down my thighs into a supported forward fold. My arms are so long, my shoulders higher than my hips. Stick that tailbone out. Feel free to stay here to protect the spine or begin to roll yourself forward, moving into that deeper forward fold. Continue stretching the back of the legs, a little bend in the knees. Breathing. Coming up again to that half fold and then all the way to mountain pose. Before we do the triangle and warrior two on the other side, I would like to stick a warrior one in here. So we're in the front, we're in the middle of our mat. So let's just step back to the back edge of the mat and let that one foot kind of roll down onto the floor. Good. The legs at first are straight and then we begin to bend into that front knee and this, keeping the shoulders right over the hips becomes a little bit of a back bend. You have that sweeping of the back leg the muscles on there. You can swing the arms forward and up. I'm going to leave the arm up in the air that's connected to that back foot and I'm going to begin to swing the other arm around in big circles. This is a balance. Keep that low belly engaged. I'm swinging around in one direction and then I'm going to change directions with this shoulder. Good. Keep breathing. And then bring that arm straight up. 
Maybe lean back a little more and then hands together, bring them down to the heart. Come up onto your back toes and then step forward. Nice, swing those hips. <laughs> and let's do the other foot. Mountain pose, step back with the other foot, roll that foot down onto the heel, bend into the front knee. You might need to readjust the back foot so you can really get that back heel into the ground. Good. Bringing the arms forward and up. I'm going to leave the arm up in the air that's connected to that back foot and start to make big circles with the other shoulder. Keep breathing. Arms coming back to that lift side by side, maybe looking up just a little bit more back bend, pull that low belly in and hands together to the heart and step forward. Swing the hips, good. We're gonna take our hands behind us again, but this time instead of planting them side by side, we can link them together and begin to walk them down the spine. And they don't have to be straight, the wrists don't have to touch. We're just opening up the elbow joint a little bit as we step the feet wider apart to go into our warrior two and triangle on the other side. Good, keeping those shoulders open, maybe even squeeze the shoulder blades a little bit. Good, let's slowly lean forward, a little unlock in the knees, just a tiny bend. Lean until you really start to feel the back of the legs opening up, muscles being asked to do a little more work. Feel the weight of your body evenly distributed between your, your toes and your heels, the balls of your feet and the outer edges. One more breath. Take a breath in and on your exhale, slowly lift up. Legs engaging, pressing into the floor. Very nice. Take the arms out, let them shake a little as you turn out the other toes, moving into your warrior two. Feel free to move a little bit, kind of feeling into this pose. I'm gonna squeeze right above my knee joint. The other hand can be on the hip or down beside you. Starting to straighten out the knee, moving into this really gentle triangle pose, top shoulder in alignment with the bottom shoulder. You can hang out here, squeezing that thigh up, squeezing the kneecap, pressing into the feet. See if this is where you need to stay or if you're feeling like you would like to go a little deeper. Feel free to bend the knees or come out of the pose when you get a cramp. Whew, I'm cramping on both sides today. <laughs> enjoying the deep stretch of the triangle pose using your glutes using your low belly to help support the shape keeping that top shoulder in the outer edge of your vision there so when it comes forward you know you need to slide up slightly again good let's breathe two more breaths And then we'll begin to bend that knee. If you'd like to come into ex extended side angle, the knee stays bent, the other arm comes up and over. Deep breaths here. You can also come in back into triangle pose if that feels good to you. Whatever you're doing, take three more breaths. Back to warrior two, we're gonna transition from here into a lunge, if that sounds good to you. If you'd prefer not to, then you don't have to worry about it. I'm gonna bring both hands forward toward the floor, come up onto the toes of that back foot in that nice long runner's lunge, good. And I like to be up on my fingertips or maybe on the first knuckles there. I'm not putting much weight in my hands at all, really opening up the body here. Stay here if you'd like playing with that back heel, rocking up onto the ball of the foot and rocking away again. Eventually you might bring that knee to the floor behind you, 
flattening out the foot, pointing it straight out from the knee all the way out to the toes. Bringing the hands to the thigh. I'm gonna keep the, the hips shifted forward here. Lift the heart, get that sweep in the low back. And again, we can swing the arm forward, reach it up. Take a deep breath. Lowering the hands to the floor. I'm gonna curl the back toes under, lift that back knee, and then I'm gonna plant my hands, lift my hips even higher, and drag the front foot back into down dog. <laughs> nice, tall hips, lifting up. I like to be up on the balls of my feet, hip toes here, good. And then begin to walk the feet toward the hands. Elbows on the thighs, supported forward fold. Good. I'm not going to stand up. I'm actually going to transition into my runner's lunge again from here. I'm going to plant the hands a little bit ahead of the feet and step back with that other foot way, way back. Nice. Bringing the belly really squished onto that front thigh there. We're going to stay here for a moment. Remember, take almost all the weight out of the hands so that the legs are what's holding this pose. Feel free to roll back and forth on those back toes. Notice the breath. If it's gotten up higher into your chest, let it expand outward into your ribs. Taking your time to slowly bring that back knee down to the floor. Flatten that back foot. Make sure it's coming straight out from the ankle. Take your time to bring your hands to the thigh into that exalted knee down lunge. Good. It feels exalting because the heart is so open here. And I'm gonna reach up with the arm that's connected to my back leg, reach up with my eyes and breathe. Gently coming down. I'm gonna bring both hands to the inside of that front foot and step it back into table pose. Feel free to take another down dog here. Or swing the hips forward into up dog. We're gonna take our time coming down onto our bellies. Feel free to take a chaturanga as you come down. I'm just gonna walk my knees back a little bit, shoulders right over the wrists, starting to bend the elbows with them drawn in toward the chest as I lower gently to the floor. Maybe turning your head to one side. <sighs> Breathing. <laughs> Resting the arms. You can fold them or take them back by your sides. See if you can feel your heart beating against the floor. Breathing into the low belly. One more big breath. And then you might begin to rock your heels side to side, rolling the hips with the legs, good. I'm gonna reach out long with one arm, kind of roll onto that armpit a little bit, lay my head down on that arm, and then begin to bend the opposite knee. Stretch out the other leg a little longer, good. This is just a little bit of a quad stretch. We've already warmed up these big muscles from all of our standing poses. You can rock the leg a little. Feel free to reach back and just gently press the heel toward the glute. This is not exactly bow pose. I'm not pressing the leg up at all. I'm keeping that thigh connected to the floor. And since I'm kind of opening my chest here, I'm gonna begin to roll my chest back onto the floor. And that just opens that quad a little wider. One more long breath here. You can release that leg and then start to bend the knee of that leg that was just bent before. Slide it out to the side of your mat. Lay your head back on your arm and start to bend the other thigh. Ooh, here's the big stretch. Rocking that foot just a little if it feels good. Kind of massaging the muscle that's rolling on the floor. Yep. Feel free to reach back for those toes if they're within reach. Don't worry if they don't, if they don't meet your fingertips. You can just rock as you reach back and breathe. 
And of course, this is the setup for cat pulling its tail. So if you want to, you could start to press into the foot and knee that are on the floor and roll yourself onto your back, coming into a really big full body twist. One of my favorites. <laughs> Just enjoy the constriction of the breath and the twisting. And gently make your way back onto the belly, releasing that leg coming back. Long legs onto the belly, good. Now, depending on where you have your camera, let's all come up into Sphinx pose and make some decisions here. You might, in a moment, just simply reach out with the other arm and roll to the other edge of your mat. That probably would work if the camera is down at your feet. If you're like me and you have the camera along this long edge of the mat, then you'll come up from Sphinx pose. You're gonna crawl yourself up and move over to the other side of the mat. Coming right back down into Sphinx again on the other end. Yeah. <laughs> and from here, we'll move into reaching out with that other arm, opposite of what we had at the other end. Starting to bend, first of all, the knee that is connected to the arm that's not reaching out. It's kind of hard to decide which one. Feel free to reach back. Gently pressing heel to the, the glute. The shoulder is open. If you'd like, you can roll the chest back onto the floor, slightly deepening that stretch in the quad. Good. If there's any pressure in your low back, release the foot a little more. Don't worry about that and rock the pelvis a little bit. Gently let that foot go and start to slide the knee off to that long edge and start to bend the other foot in. And you might just keep this as far as you'd like to go here. Rocking that foot in the air a little bit. Feel free to reach back if the toes are within reach of your fingers. Keep breathing, noticing what's going on for you if you need to back out a little bit or if you need to readjust. Feel free to press into the knee and the foot in front of you as you roll onto your back, if that's interesting for you. If you know that you don't want to do it, then skip it. It's more beneficial for you to skip things than to force yourself to do them. <laughs> Continuing to breathe full breaths, rolling back on to the belly, stretching the legs out. Good. Rocking those hips a little bit. Now I'm gonna roll over onto this side and bend the knees, coming into seed pose. Take a breath or two, see if I can feel the heart beating. Yep, still beating. And then gently begin to press into the mat and come on up to seated once again. But I'm gonna keep those knees kind of right where they are as I sit up. And some people like to tuck the feet under a little more with the knees coming more forward. Some people like to readjust and maybe even come into one leg straight in front, one leg back. It's really up to you. And it's kind of up to your hips, what you wanna do. I think this time I'm gonna just tuck that bottom foot up and over the back ankle. Good, getting nice and tall. Taking the arms out wide, fingertips are touching the floor. Turn the palms out and up. You can feel the shoulders roll back onto the body. Squeeze those shoulder blades together as you lift the arms just halfway. Stay right here, you can really feel the stretch in the forearms, maybe point the fingers down, opening the palms a little more. If you're feeling sway back here, pull that belly in, rock the pelvis. Good, one more breath. And then we're gonna flip the palms over, good, and bring the hands forward as if you're sliding them on a table. We're just gonna slide them wide, squeeze the shoulder blades together, and then bring them forward. This time we're gonna wrap that arms into eagle pose, one arm on top, one elbow on top as you begin to bend the elbows, the palms turn inward. Good, and you can grab hold of a thumb or fingers, it doesn't matter what, what you're holding on to here. I'm looking through the little keyhole in the middle of the arms, yep, just kind of center that. And then I'm just gonna swing the shoulders in a gentle twisting movement side to side. Keep that belly engaged. Coming back to center, my head is looking straight ahead, my chin parallel to the floor, and I'm just gonna rock one ear toward one shoulder. Interesting stretch. 
Roll the shoulder down, roll the chin down toward the chest wall, roll it over to the other side. Oh my goodness, deep breath. And then bring the head back to center. Remember, look down and see which arm is on top for you because we're gonna slowly open them out wide. Palms are facing down again. Take a breath here. We're gonna flip the palms up, point the fingers down. Can you tell the difference from the last time you did this? Still pretty intense for me. Palms turn back toward the floor and we're gonna slowly cross the other elbow on top, turning the palms inward as we come into those eagle arms, good. And our legs are still in the same position, so we're gonna have to do something different with our arms with the other side. So the keyhole is in the front here, good. And we'll do our chin and neck movement again. We're just gonna send the ear toward one shoulder Roll the chin slowly down toward the chest wall, roll it over to the other ear, and then bring it back up to center. And then slowly release those arms, good. Bringing them down by our sides. Let's lean back. All my fingers are pointing straight off the edges of the mat. I'm gonna lift my legs using my core and bring them up in the air and plant them in front so I can scoop my hips where I want them. And then come right back into that Nice flat back, feet lifted, boat pose. But I wanna walk my hands back a little bit. Now the fingertips are pointing toward my hips. And I'm gonna lean into my arms, just opening up and stretching out those fronts of the arms, the round, the sides, good. Deep breaths. And then slowly bringing the legs over to the other side. Good, coming back. Okay comfortable with your legs. We're gonna take the arms out wide. Again, this time palms are facing forward and we're gonna spread them back so that we can't see them out the corner of our eyes anymore. And if you try to send your eyes over to one edge of your eyes and try to see them, press them back and other side, press them back, good. And then slowly bring them forward and up. Lean them back here. We're just gonna leave one arm up in the air and take the other hand and slide the knuckles into our low back and slide it up the spine, coming into that cow's head arms. We're still reaching up with this other hand. If you'd like, you turn the palm back and plant the hand at the low base of the neck. Nice deep breath here. Remember that low back, mine is getting kind of swayed, so I'm gonna pull the belly in and lift the heart. Nice, try to keep the head in line with the middle of the chest, even though this arm is trying to push it over a little bit. Good, one more breath. And I'm just gonna melt my arms down. Good, I'm gonna round my spine a little bit and rock the chest a little bit, just keeping the spine moving, good. Taking the arms back out, palms forward, squeeze them back, way back. Send your eyes over to one edge of your, vision and then over to the other we're stretching our eyeballs too and then start to bring the arms forward as you swing them up remember which arm you had up last time and take the other one down slide it behind the back up the spine this one does not go up the spine this one wants to go off the other side that's totally fine go with the shape of your body and then that top hand comes down and we move into the stretch now i'm a little bit lopsided i'm going to try to bring everything back to center the center of my eyes, the tip of my nose, the middle of the lips, the chin, all in line with the chest, the center of the chest. Let's take another breath here, pulling that belly in. It's more of a chest breath, good. And gently relax and let those arms come down. Nice work, lean back, bring those feet up in the air and let's stretch them out into staff pose once again, rock the chest a little bit. And I'd just like to do one more, just a little more work in the hips before we lay back and stretch our hamstrings and stuff like that. So I'm gonna either have one leg out wide and the other leg tucked, or I'm gonna bend this other leg back, coming into more of a pinwheel shape. Now, if you've already been in this shape for all of our arm work, then you might so choose to sit crisscross or butterfly. But I love this shape of my legs, like a pinwheel for what it does to the hips. And I'm just gonna start to roll the belly around in the hips a little bit. One direction and then the other. 
Coming back to center, I'm gonna lean forward, get a little stretch on those hips, up the back, the spine. Good, I'm just keeping the spine long. I'm not rounding the shoulders at all. And if there's any issue with that front knee or either knee, you can straighten the leg out. The hips will still enjoy a nice deep stretch. Walking up, I'm just gonna lean to one side. I like to take the elbow of the arm that's connected to the foot that's bent back or just whichever arm you like and just lean it into the other leg. If you're sitting in a butterfly shape, you're just gonna rock to one side. Yeah, just get that deep stretch in. Good, nice deep breath. Sometimes I like to prop my head here. You can take the other arm over. Woo, big stretch. And then come right back up. As I come up, the arms go wide and I'm gonna take them down to the floor on the other side. Good. And then I start to lean into this knee. This is my pigeon variation, leaning down, keeping the spine long the whole time until my belly touches the, the leg, and then maybe grab a block for under the head. Just keep that spine lifted. One more completely, complete breath in and out. Walking those hands back in, coming back to center. Just taking the feet to the floor, swinging them to the other side. Start with that swinging of the belly round and round a little bit. Coming into the forward fold, walking the hands forward. Just notice where you feel this. Don't go too far, don't push too hard. Just enjoy the stretch. My, my tailbone comes right off the floor. The back of my, my glutes are lifted. I'm mostly on the, the legs that are on the floor there. One more breath. And then walk it up. We're gonna do our side stretch now toward the other side. Maybe the arm stays down or it comes over. It's kind of up to you what you'd like to do here. Keep that breath moving through the body. As you come up, the arms reach out and we twist toward that front bent knee. The hands come down and lean into that pigeon stretch. Three or four long, relaxed breaths. And then right back up, nice and tall. Leaning back, we're gonna swing our legs all the way around so that we can start to lay all the way back. Make sure you can reach your strap and block as you lay back. This is the first time we will have laid down on our backs in class today. <laughs> Move into whatever intuitively feels good to you. Maybe rocking the hips a little bit, bringing them into the chest or stretching the legs out. There's no wrong way, way to just acclimate to supine position on the spine. If you'd like, you can eventually lengthen your legs out, take your arms over your head, full body stretch, point the toes, Breathe into the belly. You can really feel the open expanse between the hips and the ribs. And as you're ready, the arms will float down and one knee at a time comes into the chest, both knees together, eventually rocking a little bit side to side. Let's balance out our low back, keeping one knee into the chest. I'm gonna lift the other leg up in the air, push through the ankle, roll out the foot. I'm gonna to try to bring the toes a little closer to my nose as I inhale and on the exhale, I'm gonna take a long time, the full extent of my breath, that exhale to make the leg float toward the floor where I'm just gonna let it hover above the ground. And breathe. See if you 
you can settle the hips. And one more breath. Take a long breath in, and then as you exhale, take that same journey back up on the exhale. The leg floating all the way up. Good, really nice and slow. Bring the knee into the chest, open the knees wide apart. See if you can feel a difference in those hips. And then squeeze that knee in as the other leg lifts up in the air. Push up through the heel, roll out the toes, the ankle a little bit. And then inhaling, the toes come slightly closer to the nose and then exhale, take a long journey down to hover. Take a full breath as the leg hovers. Holding on the inhale and moving back up on the exhale. Take a long time. Eventually squeezing that knee in, opening the hips wide, rocking a little side to side. And I'd like to just do one more hip opener. I'm gonna plant my feet and grab my block and lift my hips into bridge pose. If you wanna hold out for a minute and not slide the block under right away, you can. Just engaging the muscles of the thighs, the glutes, the core here. Eventually, you know that you're gonna slide that block under the hips, but take your time. We've got some time here to experience this strengthening pose whenever you're ready relaxing the hips down on the block. Adjusting the block so that you feel supported. We never want to have the block right under the low curve of the spine. I really like to plant my tailbone, that coccyx curve of the tailbone, right in the middle of the block. A little bit of the fanny hanging off one edge. A lot of air under that low back. Good. And I'm just going to pull one knee into my chest. So you might have to readjust the block as you move this in and start to slide the other leg out along the mat. This is a big hip opener across that front of the hip. That long leg, I'm gonna take that arm that corresponds with that long leg and stretch it over my head, full body stretch on that one side of the body. We're gonna take two deep breaths here. The arm comes down as the heel slides back along the mat and I release the knee that I've been holding on to. As that foot comes down, the other knee comes in and I just gently find the stretch on the other side. Slowly adding the arm over the head, two deep breaths. arm comes down first, the foot slides along the mat, and I release the knee so that now both feet are on the floor. Maybe rock a little bit. It's time to maybe go back into a bridge pose, releasing the block from underneath. You can stay up in bridge if you'd like, or come right down to the floor. Letting that low back relax. I'm going to come into a butterfly shape, soles of the feet coming together, knees coming apart, arms spreading wide apart here. I'm just going to do a little bit more with the shoulders before we settle into our final twist. So we're going to bring the arms straight up in the air, palms coming together. I'm going to try to see if my elbows can touch each other. If they can't, don't worry, just kind of draw them toward each other. Begin to bend the elbows and bring the thumbs right down into your third eye point in the middle of your forehead. Take a breath here. And then keep sliding your fingers toward the floor, bringing those elbows toward your face. Take a breath here. And then with the fingers touching the floor, the fingertips, we're going to start to open the elbows, widening them out, coming into what looks kind of like a double butterfly. The fingertips are still touching elbows wide, resting on the ground. Good. We're going to bring those elbows back together, palms touching again. Slide the arms back down, reach the hands back up. We're just unfolding the same way we came in. Arms are going wide apart. Good. 
I'm going to take one of my hands now and, and bend the elbow into a goal post arm and then see if the palm wants to touch the floor. This is a weird position for the shoulder. And then I'm going to start to slide the hand with the palm down right into the low, low part of my back. Let's go ahead and bring our knees together, walking the feet back on the floor. I'm going to let my knees touch and walk my feet further apart out toward the edges. And my hand is still slit, is still slid right under that arch of the low back bit. Now the other arm is going to come up in the air and I'm going to turn the palm toward my head and then stick the fingers down into my shoulder, right behind into the side of my neck. And this elbow is going to be up in the air. This is just a variation of our cow's head pose that we did uh, standing, I think. Go ahead and let the elbow go wider, readjust the hands if it feels good, and another breath. Slide the top hand out and let it go wide again. Open the other arm too, and then switch. You're going to take this the hand that was on top, turn it into goal post, palm down, slide the hands into the low back. The other hand is going to come up and tuck right next to the neck onto the shoulder. See if it wants to go out wide and take a breath. Releasing the arms, maybe rocking the knees a little bit. There are so many great twists to end our practice with. If you'd like another um, coming together of the knees, you can cross the legs and come into a twisted roots. I would I would cross one leg over and then use the other foot to scoot the hips in the direction of the top leg and then let the knees go toward the floor. Now this is a really big twist for my hips, so I prefer to have my knees stacked. My arms out wide. Take a couple of breaths. Always know you can prop up with a block between the legs or under the knees. Good. When you feel ready, you'll just gently come back up to center. If you're doing that twisted roots, you'll re you'll cross the other leg over, scoot the hips away, and rock into the twist, or keep the knees stacked, breathing, and relaxing into the shape. As you rest here in your twists, you can start planning your Shavasana. Moving into it whenever you feel ready. You might put your legs up the wall or put your block back under your hips. You might just stretch your legs out and relax. We're just going to be quiet for about four minutes, just moving back into the awareness of our breath. Continuing to breathe through the nose as much as possible. Nostril breathing, nasal breathing is so balancing for our body. It helps balance all of the systems and bring us back into restore, out of that fight or flight. As you settle, feeling the back of your body heavy against the floor, noting those little parts of the body where there's air underneath, maybe the back of the neck or the knees, the low back, the wrists. And then listen to the room that you're in. Become fully aware of this moment. And just keep breathing.
let your next breath be a little deeper, a little longer on the exhale. Taking your time to open your eyes and wiggle your fingers and toes. Slowly rolling over and making your way up to seated where we bring our hands together at our hearts and we say namaste. Thank you so much for being with me today. If you enjoyed this practice, please click like and subscribe and share it with your friends. Thanks again.